Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our channel. Hey, I'm out of soup of coffee this morning. Let's get now and get going. I uh, just want to say thank you, guys. Uh, we've had an uptick in subscribers in the last month or so. And uh, we want to say thank you. We're glad you found our channel. Uh, we're glad you're enjoying it. And we're glad that you subscribe. Um, and know uh, if you know someone that you think may like our channel uh, please share it with someone but uh we thank you for subscribing we've had a great couple of weeks trip uh, we took a two-week trip out to the, the the science region we went over to dumagadi dow and zamanita and then we headed over to sikihor and then from sikihor we went to Pengalau and behold and uh we've had fun making the videos and sending those out to you guys so you can uh you can see the things that we've seen and uh, some beautiful country in the philippines and uh we, we enjoy sharing it but i want to do something a little bit different today uh, back in 2015 when i decided that uh, i wanted to know more about the philippines and was thinking about coming here for a move uh, or retire here and uh like anyone else, I, I said, well, what's the best way to find out about something? Of course, get online. So I get on YouTube, but back in 2015, there wasn't very many people uh, blogging in the Philippines, maybe three or four guys. But I did run across one guy, and I followed him since 2015. And this guy, he's, he's good. He's probably put out, I don't know, probably thousands of videos now all about the Philippines. And... Um, you have find some good information. Some of you guys are going to know who he is. I'm not going to say who he is, but some of you guys are going to know who he is. Some of you will not. But uh, I did get a chance to sit down with him, uh, meet him, and uh, interview him. So uh, that's what I'm going to show you guys today. So without further ado, let's check out this video. Okay, guys. So today I got a very, very special guest with me. Uh, this is someone I've been wanting to meet for a while, and he's one of the bloggers that I started following when I first started wanting to know things about the the Philippines. And this guy, he's been here. He was like one of the beginner guys. <laughs> <laughs> and his name is Henry. He also got, goes by uh, Rike. Mm -hmm. And uh, the name of his channel is Life, by the, Life, by the Life Beyond the Sea. Life Beyond the Sea. And uh, like I say, I followed him for years, and I wanted to actually shake his hand yeah. <laughs> and say thank you. Uh, thank you for all the blogs you've done. You, uh, you've been an inspiration to a lot of guys. A lot of information comes from you over the years, and we've taken that to heart. And if you guys um, follow his channel, if you're thinking about coming to the Philippines, you follow his channel, and he'll give you some good information. And uh, so I just wanted to interview Henry, at first, maybe tell uh, tell everyone like when you first come to the Philippines, and just a little background of you that maybe that don't know him. Mm -hmm. uh, just a little background. Uh, well, December. Well, actually, going back to 2011, I made the decision in July 2011 that I was going to move full time to the Philippines, and I gave myself one year to just get my ducks in a row you know, cut it, cut loose any loose ends, and I did. So by July of 2012, moved out here, uh, started out at Mactan, eventually made my way to Bohol, the other side of Bohol, and then uh, just started moving to Moabala, Dumaguete, Bapan, Cebu, uh, just keep rotating and roaming. Um, and along the way, just started a channel just kind of for the heck of it and uh so now here we are <laughs> <laughs> and no uh when uh i first started watching in 2015 you'd already been blogging for two or three years yeah. right yeah because yeah. i remember going back and watching some of your early videos and uh i followed him as he moved along i followed you when you went out to vietnam and then when you come back here and uh of course now uh Henry, he found his special lady, and he's married yeah. now for yeah. like a couple of years now, well, right? Well, we've been together, uh, let's see, September will be, oh, we're already September, so now, yeah, yeah. it's like five years we've been together, wow. but married now, coming up on three years. Wow. 
So I I uh I remembered all that. I remember you guys started dating and then uh because that was uh during the pandemic too as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, uh we'd only known each other maybe a couple months. And then March 15th, everything hit the fan. So we just had to decide right away. We were in Cebu at the time. There was no time to really travel. It was kind of difficult. So we ended up getting a one-year lease uh, there at Solania, right across from Ayala. And so we were together in that one studio apartment uh, for a year. And it wasn't hard. I mean, we, we were like two peas in a pod. You know, and and so at the end of that year, I pretty much knew this. We just get along great. You the one, yeah. yeah. Still get along great. That's kind of like us. Um, I mentioned it before. When you get in a pandemic and you can't go anywhere, you're basically forbidden to go outside. <laughs> if you can be with someone day after day, twenty four seven, that's a good test of uh, oh, yeah. how you're gonna how you're gonna oh, be yeah. if you're. Uh, in a long-term relationship or you got married yeah yeah so uh it's it's been an adventure definitely even since 2012 it's just it's hard to compare it to my life in the states where here literally every time i walked out the front door something interesting was going on. it's been an adventure i know this guy he has a lot of facets to his life he's uh we have four channels now? Just, yeah, actually, I'm probably going to start my fourth tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and and they're all different. Yeah. They're all different. And because uh, I follow him, like I said, I follow him for a while, and I follow different his channels, and he gives good advice. i tell you that. If you want to know things about the Philippines, Henry's a good it's a good channel to, to watch. Now, for me, I'm trying to travel around and see where maybe we're going to move next. Mm. That's what brought us out to uh, Dumaguete area, took us to Sikihor. Now we're over here at Alona Beach and uh, in uh, the Bahol area. So sell me on Bahol, Henry, if you could. What, what would you say to sell me uh, to move to Bahol? Well, like I've often said, uh, there is no one island for everybody. Uh, because some people want the big city. Some people want Manila, Cebu type uh, infrastructure. Now, what I love about the whole and V does as well is that if I had to limit it to two things we love that we don't find in many other places, uh, one of them is privacy. We can live out of the province 10 minutes outside of town. Uh, it's just greenery. I mean, we know one neighbor who's actually the house, the house, the uh, not housekeeper, but a uh, groundskeeper. Um, I mean, but other than that, it's there's hardly any houses. It's all greenery. It's all fenced in. We got the dogs. It's just very peaceful and private. We're homebodies, so we really appreciate that. Uh, the second thing for us that's a selling point is the beach. Uh, we love just blow in the afternoon at the beach, you know, and there's there's some pretty nice ones out uh, on Panglao, which is right next to us. So um, now not everybody's going to want the beach as a priority. Uh, Dumaguete has beaches out in Dowin, but if you like the hills, Valencia is awesome. I love Valencia, but there's no beaches. <laughs> right. But Bohol is, is nice. Tagbilarn is not a big city, but... There's movie theaters, restaurants, uh, most things you can find with you. Because um, we're looking at uh, Dumaguete area, and we're also looking at here. Um, and you've lived in both. You've lived in both places. Yeah. Um, so what would you uh, what would you say the differences or some of the similarities that Dumaguete or uh, uh, Panglao would have that that are good? Well, the similarity is that when I lived in Dumaguete, technically I lived in Bacong. Same similarity is in Bacong, I was right by the beach, surrounded by province, very private, very quiet, peaceful. Uh, you can also find that up in Valencia, 
very, you know, I mean, Paul old dog can tell you, you know, it's just very peaceful out there. Um, that's the similarities. Now, the big difference is that uh, Bohol is more of a, like, Dumaguete is, is a tourist area. Bohol, Pang Lao in particular, this whole Alona Beach area really is like a, a heavily saturated tourist area. But the difference is that in, in Dumaguete, the main social hub is right there on the border. You know, a lot goes on at Robinson's Mall, but really the boardwalk is where you meet and greet and, you know, everything life happens. Whereas on Bohol, you don't really have one social hub. There's a lot of people here at Alona Beach, but they're mostly visitors that are here for a week. You know, there are people from Korea, lots of Korean people here because uh, the Flights uh, go straight from here, I believe, to Busan. So, um, but so most of the people that you meet in Alona, uh, you come back a week later, you don't see the same people. Whereas in Duma, you know, it's the same people. And so that's good and bad. You know, uh, they know when you're new in town. They know if you've changed girlfriends. They know everything. They're just sitting there watching everything. So... Uh, but it's a good place to go if you want to meet expats, you're new to the Philippines. Again, be careful with who you meet, because yeah. some guys are just very bitter, cynical, and jaded. But you want to meet, you can meet some good guys that'll give you some good pointers, tell you where to find stuff to do and where the immigration is at. You know, it's a little easier than going to the middle of nowhere and there's no expats to get any feedback from. Right. Right. So they all have their pros and cons. And would you say there's probably more uh, expats uh, in Dumaguete oh, yeah. than here? Oh, yeah. Like I said, here, I mean, I you know, just walking in, I would say 40% of the people I saw were Korean that are only going to be here for a week or so. Uh, I think I saw some Europeans. Uh, I saw maybe five Americans. And then uh, the rest is all the Filipinos that work here. Um and like I said, you know, V and I come here every once in a while. We were just here last Saturday. Uh, I, I can almost guarantee you, other than the workers here, it's a whole new fresh batch of people. <laughs> I know you said your uh, wife likes the beach and oh, yeah. the beach area too. Um, what would you say the best beach in Mahol and then the best beach in um, Negros area? Um, well, the favorite for my wife and I is definitely Oceanic, which used to be called, yesterday, guys. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, but don't all come on the same day. Um, it used to be called South Palms, but now it's Oceanica, um, and we love it. It's it's just a, a top notch resort. You've been there. Yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. We were yesterday, it's, watched the sunset. It's the stuff you dream about in Shawshank Redemption. You know, um, now in in Dumaguete area, there's quite a few nice beaches, but they're out in Dowin. Don't swim in Silamon Beach. That's where the current takes all the gray water. You don't want to right. be that. Right. Go south to Dowin. Every resort, I, I made a habit of just pulling into resorts. Um, was there's one I think called Astrodome and uh, Mike's Beach Resort and there's just so many of them. Santa Monica, I think one is called. But you can pull into any of 20 beaches or 20 resorts in Dowin and just pay like 200 pesos day use. You, you, you use the lounge chairs, the swimming pool, the beach. They usually have a restaurant there. Um, there's really not one beach in particular, although... I would say we often end up at like Mike's Beach Resort. Mike's Beach Resort. Yeah, we uh, stayed in an Airbnb uh, called Villa Armani, and that was down uh, almost a little further than uh, uh, Dowling, down towards Dan Monita. Mm -hmm. It was there. That's a little further south. Yeah, it was it was beautiful, beautiful place. Oh, by the way, also uh, I can't always keep forgetting if it's called Pura Viva or Viva Pura. Uh, I think it's Pura Viva Resort. I actually did a video on um, that place. That's really nice. They have a nice beach in. And it's right there in Dallas. 
Well, those are some of the things that that we're looking for to uh, when we decide when we want to leave leave Manila, and that's why we come here and see that. And I knew I knew this guy right here. He knows a lot about this area, and he can tell you uh, he can tell you exactly where to go, the things to do, and not to see. And I wanted to meet Henry just to say thank you, thank you for the years of following you and all the good advice that he gives. So if you guys want to get some good advice, if you're thinking about coming to the Philippines or even retiring in the Philippines, check out Henry's channel and uh, you'll get some good information. And thanks again, Henry. Oh, yeah. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, glad to be of help. We hope you guys enjoyed that video of Life Beyond the Sea with Rike and maybe got something out of it uh, and some information that you may need. So uh, follow his channel. You'll definitely get the information you need. Also, follow Kano and Kanoi. You want to see a uh, family have fun in the Philippines and go places and do things. Uh, we enjoy uh, making little videos of it and uh, we enjoy sharing it with you guys. So, um, so follow us. We got some more coming up from um, where we're at oh from ping lao we're gonna be in the whole ping lao on the next video so check those out some beautiful scenery and we hope you guys enjoy it so till we see you again god bless